God is wanting us to be action figures in our work, in our school, in our home, all these places. And so what we're talking about, what we're going to be talking about for the next few weeks is how to awaken, just as we sang, how to awaken the hero within us. I don't know if you've noticed uh, today while we've been worshiping, but have you noticed the light going on and off in here? Has anybody been noticing that? You know, it's almost like, it's almost like that cape is hanging there inside the, the telephone booth, and it's like saying, I'm here. I, I'm here. Pay attention to me. You know, your cape is waiting for you. God, God wants you to take your cape and put it on and be the hero that you're supposed to be at work, at school, at home especially. So your, your cape's waiting for you, and the light's flashing. It's like, when are you going to take it up? When are we going to put it on? When are we going to be the hero, the action figure that God would have us to be? I, I don't know about you. I, I, you know, that, I, I really want to do that. I really want to be that person. And, and so, you know, we're reading. Uh, some of you are doing the 100-day uh, plan. If you're not, it's not too late. There's some copies, I think. David, you say out here on the table, out there outside the room. Pick them up. Start doing it. Um, I love to do it. Debbie and I are doing it. Many of you are doing it. Sometimes when you're reading the Bible, you're reading along and everything's like sweet and nice and, you know, life is good. It's uh, all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns, you know, and everything's good. And then you, then you come across a, a piece. And a lot of times when I come across it, it's in red. Do you know what that means? It's Jesus speaking. And, and so chapter 7 of Matthew is one of those places. And when I was thinking about uh, scripture for us to read and to study together, you know, what I was thinking was, where's some scripture that talks about who we are, who we're supposed to be, and, and what we're building in our homes? And this is the scripture that God gave me. It's uh, chapter 7. It's in red, so get ready. I'm going to read maybe a little bit more than you have on your uh, sheets and what may be up on the board, because I want you to, I want you to hear what Jesus is saying. Now, you know, this is part of what they call the Sermon on the Mount. And, and so Jesus has a big crowd. A lot of his disciples are there. Others are there. There's a big crowd. And so he's, he's teaching them. And so um, he begins with, uh, I'm going to begin with chapter 7, verse 12. Here's what he says. He says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. So, so that's the golden rule, right? We know that. I mean, we're supposed to know that. The question is, are we doing it? You know, are we uh, treating others like that? And then there's a, there's a space in mind, and it goes to a heading that says the narrow gate. And here's what it says. It says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell, he said hell in church. Can you believe that? The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose their, that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. And then he goes on to talk about false prophets, and, and uh, he, he begins to talk about fruit. And here's what he says, verse 17, a good tree... A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree, watch this part, every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the what? Into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. And so he goes on. I skipped on your, your notes. I skipped a piece that I probably ought to read because here's what it says. It's called True Disciples, and here's what it says. It says, Not everyone who calls on me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Here's the part I don't like. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform many miracles in your name. Then Jesus says, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. And I, I read that, and I'm like, holy cow, do you understand what he's saying? Holy cow, that's a good Batman reference there. <laughs> do you understand what he's saying? He's saying to you and to me, there's some people, maybe me, who think we're in and we're not in. And on that day, 
when it comes, and we say, but Lord, I was in, I was in church. <laughs> you know, I was a preacher. I did all these things, Lord. And he's going to say, I don't know you. Go away. That scares me. But then he says this. He goes on. Be up on the board, I think. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, which is what we want to do, is wise. That person, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Foundations. And then it says this. It says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. And so I read that, and I, and I think, you know, what am I doing? You know, am I leaving that out? Is this me? Am, am I... Am I being a tree that bears good fruit? Am I a good tree? Am I living this out at home? Am I living it out at work, at school, wherever it may be? Am I being an action figure? Am I building the foundation? You know, action figures, uh, superheroes have a family. I mean, most of them do. If you, if you follow action figures and superheroes, or they have somebody that's like a family to them, uh, but most of them had a difficult family setting. Did you know that? Looking back at their history, Superman's parents abandoned him, sent him to another planet, right? And then he found some parents here who had kind of a, took him under. Batman lost his parents. They were murdered in front of him when he was young. Spider-Man was raised by his aunt. Popeye had to live with olive oil, if you remember <laughs> her. You know, heroes have family struggles, and, and all of us do, because there's no perfect family. So we're going to have struggles, and, and, and here's what I've discovered. Maybe you've discovered it, too. The reality is this. One of the hardest places to be a hero is at home. It's at home. That's a reality. You know, it, it's there that we seem to have the least amount of patience for the people that we should have the most amount of patience for. I mean, it's, it's, it's there that we have kind of the short temper and, and things get under our skin real quick, whereas if we were somewhere else, that wouldn't happen. It's at home a lot of times where that selfishness, me, 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 what I need, what I want to do, what I say goes, that's where it creeps up. And, I, and I'm wondering, like, why is that? I mean, why is that? We say things to our children, to our siblings, to our parents that we would never say to anyone else, guilty. Some of us have been there. We express anger at our spouses that we hide from others. We, we, we're lazy at home, and uh, that shows up when it doesn't show up outside. But family relationships were intended by God to be a blessing. And so we can't do without family. In fact, Jesus was born into a family. It's interesting that God didn't create Jesus already as a single adult, you know, with no family. I mean, God brought him into this world in a family because God knows the family is significant. The home is important. But if we're honest, the home is where we often face the greatest challenges in trying to live out our Christian faith. And so I told you something last week before we left. I said this. It's, I think it's your first fill in the blank. If Christianity doesn't work at home, it doesn't work at all. Now, I believe it works at home. I think you believe that as well. But this message is for all of us here. Whether you have children at home, young children, no children, I'm wanting children. I don't ever want children. I want to be single all my life. My kids are grown. They're out of town. My, you know, I'm a grandparent now. I'm a great-grandparent. This is for everybody because what it's about is how we relate to those who are closest to us. Are you with me on that? So in both our actions and our reactions, we see our true self. That's what Jesus was talking about. When he talks about fruit, that's what he's talking about, that the fruit we produce will reflect who we are, whether we're a good tree or a bad tree. You know, I say this. I said, you've heard me say this before in our Why series. Jesus is more interested in why you do what you do than he is in what you do. And the same thing is true when it comes to this. Jesus is more concerned about our walk than he is our talk. That's why he's writing this. I mean, that's why this piece was written for us. Jesus spoke these words. He warns trees with bad fruit. Here's what's going to happen to you. Cut down. 
and thrown into the fire. And he says, so you identify people by their actions, their fruit. And houses built on the wrong foundation simply won't stand the storm. So I want to give you four practical ways to start being a hero at home. Let me say this before I start. I can't in one sermon, um, you know, help everybody be heroes. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But, but what I can do is give you some things that, that if you start applying them, you're going to be moving towards that because becoming a hero takes work. It's not something that you, you know, you get just because you showed up at church one Sunday when we were talking about heroes. So here are the four things I want to talk about. Here's the first thing. Where, wherever you are, you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent. Um, be the same person at home that you are at church, at work, or at school, or other places. When I, when I was still practicing law, um, I, had a, a, I was getting ready to leave and, and start ministry. I had a, a, a lawyer call me. He was, he was uh, up in Douglas. I didn't know him. Didn't know anything about him. Secretary said, hey, there's a lawyer on, on, your phone, on the phone from Douglas wants to talk to you. He heard you're going into ministry. I said, okay. So I pick up the phone. Hey. He says, um, after we introduced and talked for a while, he says this. He says, he says, Jimmy, how were you able to balance your Christian faith with the work that you had to do as a lawyer? And I, you know, I said, okay, say more about that. What do you mean? He said, I find myself, I, I, I'm two different people. I'm one person when I'm at home, and I'm another person when I'm at work, and it's killing me. And I said, okay, okay, well, you know, I, I don't have great answers for you, but I know that it's not good to be two different people. You want to be the same person wherever you are. Now, don't hear that the wrong way. If you're the bad fruit, I'm not saying, hey, let's just be consistent with the bad fruit <laughs> and be bad at home as well as you are maybe other places. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you want to be good fruit, right, in the same places. Um, when, when I was at my last church, dads, <coughs> husbands, listen to this one. I had a guy who called me, says, can I meet with you for coffee? And I said, sure, sure, we can do that. Nice guy, love him, know him, uh, good guy. And uh, so we go to the coffee shop, we meet, and we sit down, we talk a little bit. And then he finally says this to me. He says, um, struggling in my marriage, Jimmy. Um, in fact, my wife told me that if I don't do something, she's going to leave me. Got kids, got a new baby. I mean, oh, he said, uh, he said more than anything else, Jimmy, here's what I want to be known as. I want to be... I want to be known as a kind and gentle father and husband. And I hadn't been that. He says, you know, I work hard, and he did. I knew what he did for a living. I mean, he had to work hard. He says, there's so much pressure for me to produce. And, and you know, I, I come home, and I just let it out on everybody, and, and I don't want to do that. And, and I don't want my kids growing up and, and thinking that's who I am. I want them to see that their father was a kind and gentle father. More than anything else, Jimmy, that's what I want. And, and I didn't have great wisdom there again for him, but I understood what he wanted. And, and so I encouraged him. I said, Nate, you can be that. You know, we like to excuse it. And, and, and so we, we, we think we're justified in mistreating those that we love so much. You, we, we hear people like my friends say, and others, I've said it. If you knew what I go through all day long, if you sat here and took care of these kids all day long like I do, and then you come home and you want this and the other, you'd understand why I talk to you the way I do. Or, 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 or you hear people say this. Well, you know, at home, I can, I, I can be me. I can let my hair down. For those of you who have hair, right? <laughs> God bless you. And it's like I, I can just be myself there. Well, who are you? What is yourself? What is your true self, I would ask? So good fruit in the home builds the right foundation. And there's so much help from the Bible. That's why it's so important for us to know the Bible, study the Bible, understand what God is teaching us because there's so much wisdom there that helps us not run into these problems. Here are a couple that it says about being in the home. Ephesians 6, 4 says this, Parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instruction. Christian discipline and instruction. And there's a whole area of, de of description of what that is in the Bible. James tells us this, the brother, the brother of Jesus says this, Let every person be quick to hear, quick to hear, slow to speak, 
and slow to become angry, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So bearing good fruit in the home is going to build the kind of foundation we're supposed to have. Because here's the reality. The truth is this, that trust in me, I think this will be up on the screen, trust in me is affected when I, look at this first one, discipline and anger. I discipline and anger. Jim was probably 10 years old. I was still practicing law at the time. There are probably no 10-year-olds in here, but 10-year-old, uh, you know, is kind of pushing the boundaries. He's trying to find out how far he could go. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Are your parents who've had children that age? And, and so we were at dinner one night around the table, me and Debbie and Jim, and uh, we, we had one of those kitchen tables and we had the ladder back chairs. You know what those are? You know the ones I'm talking about that have the little slats in them? And so we're, we're having a nice meal, I thought, and I told Jim to stop doing something. Can't even remember what it was. And, um, and he did it again. And I'm like, I told you not to do that. In fact, if you do that again, I'm going to wear you out. You ever heard that before, that phrase? I said, I'm going to wear you out. Well, listen, he, he, he was defiant. I mean, he was like, okay, fine. And he did whatever it was again. Man, I lost it. I, I, I jumped up out of my chair, and when I did, that ladder back chair hit the, hit the tile floor. It said, bam, just as real loud. And I grabbed him by the neck, you know, and I, I got to, we're going down the hall with him. I was taking him to his bedroom. I was going to wear him out. And I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm like, I'm going to teach you. You respect your father. You don't treat me like that. We're going down the hallway, and I hear this voice back in the kitchen. It's Debbie, and she says, do it in love. <laughs> stopped in my tracks. I really did. You know why? I had no intention of doing that in love. <laughs> I was mad. He had disrespected me. He had to learn a lesson. I was going to make it right. But I understood with that sweet voice that God was speaking to me saying, you're not in the position to do this. Do not do this. And I promise you this, I, I stopped in my tracks, didn't I, Debbie? And I came back down the hallway to the kitchen and I you know, released him, and I said, I will never, ever do that again, ever. And so help me God, I have not. Now, when you discipline in anger, the people that you love so much lose trust in you and me. And so I, I can't do that. Words, use words, look at the next one. Use words that, when, people lose trust in me when I use words that communicate rejection. And I tell them, you're not, you're worthless. You're no good. I don't love you. You're not right. You're not, you're not good. Ignore the voices when I ignore the voices of others. When I don't try to understand who they really are. And the last one about being consistent, when I break my core promises. When I break my core promises. I can't do that. I gotta be consistent. Here's a second one. Watch this one. I gotta be genuine. I gotta be genuine. You know the old saying says, do as I say, not as I do. Have you ever heard that before? Doesn't work, folks. Don't put it in your voc vocabulary. Don't put it in your, in your thought pattern. It doesn't work. So here's what I mean by this. When it comes to be genuine, here's what I mean. I, I need to admit when I mess up, and I need to ask for forgiveness. That's a genuine, humble, authentic Because the blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. And here's the thing. Others are watching. People in your home are watching. People outside your home are watching. You have neighbors who are watching. You have non-believers who are watching you at work, at home, at school. I mean, they're watching you to see this is what Christians do. This is how they act. And so I heard, I think it was, what did we say it was? Dobson, who said that? James Dobson, who said this. I'd heard it years ago. I couldn't remember. Somebody told me after the 9 o'clock service. There's a saying, phrase. You ought to write it down. Look at this phrase right here. More is caught than taught. Have you ever heard that? You know what I mean by that? More is caught. People watching you and how you're living and how you're trying to be a Christian and trying to run your home, they're, they're learning more by watching you than what you actually teach them. Hey, you should do this. You need to be careful to do this. You know, instruction, they're watching behavior. They're learning more from our behavior than they are what we tell them they should do. And that's important. A hero at home must show others a number of things. Here, here, here's what I know. They need to show 
what it's like to pursue a better relationship with God. You do that in the home. You do that as a hero. What a committed, loving marriage and family looks like, that's what you do. You show them. You demonstrate it in the way you act. Action figures do that. How it looks to prioritize Jesus among everything else and above everything else. Above everything else. And what it's like to reject the world and the culture and the materialism and the consumerism. You teach that as a hero. You show that as a hero at home. Reggie Joyner, he does a lot of teaching. In fact, uh, his orange curriculum is probably the most popular children's curriculum in all of churches. He, he says this. He says, hypocrisy from Christ followers, including parents, is the number one reason prodigals give for leaving the faith. The people around us are watching how we act under the pressures of home to see if this Christian life is real or not. That's what they're watching to see. And so we have to be very careful there. We have to be very genuine. We have to be consistent. And here's the third one. We have to be forgiving. You know, I said a minute ago, asking for forgiveness is important. I am sorry. And be willing to do that. But then also be willing to forgive others who have hurt you. Be forgiving. So it's hard to do that with the people that we're closest to sometimes. But heroes mess up. Heroes mess up. Superheroes do. They make mistakes. They make bad choices. And so do we. And so I want to be quick to say, to, to forgive others who have hurt me. Colossians 3.13, make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. You say, but I can't. I can't forgive them. I remember I was preaching a matter on forgiveness, and, and I had a little old lady. She came to church, sweet lady, and um, I was greeting her at the end of the service out uh, in the front of the church, coming by and shaking hands and all that. And she says, uh, I heard what you said, preacher, but I just can't forgive them. And I said, you know, okay, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But would you do this? Would you pray that God would help you to want to forgive them? Could you pray something like that? And she kind of, you know, well, I guess, I guess I could try that. I guess I could. I don't know whether she ever forgave the person. I don't know what it was all about. But I know this, as long as she held on to it, she would hold on to it, and it would harm her. That's not good fruit. And so we got to be willing to forgive. Here's the last one. I, I need to put on the cape. I'm going to put it this way. I need to step up. We need to step up, folks. Let me tell you what. The family in America, I don't need to say any more than that. The family in America right now needs action figures more than anything else. And they need to see what it's modeled like in a good home. And so I, I want to encourage you guys, I want to encourage you ladies, step up, put on the cape, you know, quit playing around with it. Let's get serious with it. Let's take the steps that we need to take, which means I may need to jump into a Bible study right now. I may need to learn more. I didn't know a whole lot about the Bible when I was trying to raise our son. I knew where it was. It was on the shelf, but I didn't really know a whole lot of what was in it and how helpful it could be. I need to read the Bible with my family. I love that some of you are doing the 100 days with your family and you're posting pictures on, online, you know, that you and your family are reading together. That's powerful. You'll never know the power of that. You need to pray with your family. I mean, pray with them. Before they go to school, before they, you know, have big tests, before big events in their lives, before your children get married on the, on the day of their wedding, pray with them. I mean, pray with your family. You need to model that. You need to be the hero so that they see this is where the foundation for, it forms here in the home. You need to lead your family. Lead, L-E-A-D, not leave. Some of you are thinking about that maybe. <laughs> and never say this. Never say this. It's too late. I blew it. I had my chance. I blew it. My family's gone or it's too late. You know, I'm not good enough. My life is a mess. How could I lead someone else? Never, ever say that. When you hear that voice in your head, let me tell you this, it's not coming from God. It is coming from Satan, the deceiver, the liar, who wants you to believe that. But God doesn't believe that. God sees in you someone who can step into the telephone booth and put on the cape and come out the hero. 
It's never too late because God's story, God, God is building, he is telling a story of restoration and redemption through your family, in your family. So never buy into that myth that you're not good enough or it's too late or anything like that. Instead, step up, confess it. Just say, I've been confessing it. I don't know that I was the father that I should have been or that I've been the husband that I should have been. But it's not too late. I want to be. That's what I want to do. Paul said this. He said, I forget what's behind, Philippians 3.13, and do my best to reach what is ahead so I can run straight toward the goal in order to win the prize. So I need to remember this. There are people that are watching us, and the generations behind us are following. They're following. So a hero in the home learns to cooperate with, cooperate with God to produce good fruit. And those who live in or come to our homes or that we talk to on the phone from our homes have a front row seat to the grace and goodness of Christ if we'll live like that. So laying a foundation built on the rock, storms come and it won't collapse. I had a, uh, I'm, I'm done, I'm done except for this story. I had a guy in Macon, 32 years old, had a very, very rare form of cancer. And uh, it was terminal. And he asked if I would come and sit with him. And so I did. Went out there with Debbie a few times. And we just sit and talk. Love the guy. He was a radio personality in Macon. Just a super guy. And, um, and he, he, he asked me a question one day. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. He said this. He said, you know what I'm afraid of more than anything else? I said, what's that? He said that I didn't lay the right foundation for my family as the father and as the husband. I didn't do it. And I'm afraid it's too late now. I only have days, maybe weeks. And I'm afraid it's too late, Jimmy. God doesn't always give me much to say that's really wise, but on this one occasion, for some reason, God taught me to tell him, told me to tell him this. What happens between, I, I told him you're wrong. What happens, what you're going through right now and what you're doing right now for the time that you have left is going to lay the best foundation your family could ever have. And you're doing it the right way. Good for you. Way to go. And, and so I, I want to be that kind of a person. Listen, here, here, what happens in the home is the most important factor for how people see and know God. So here's the question. Are you wearing the, are you wearing the cape? Do you want to? Do you want to be that person? Then be that person. Uh, here's some next steps for you. Here's some things you can do to be the hero right now. Choose to love your family as Christ wants you to. Be more forgiving and understanding of others, especially in your family. Look at this one. Step up and be the person in my family that reflects the grace and goodness of Christ. Put on the cape. And then look at this last one, guys. For us guys, we're going to band together. we got a team that's already pulling this together. There's, we're going to have our first man camp. I'm so excited about that. Man camp. Somebody said, are we going to blow up things? What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to do something fun. I can promise you that. That's February the 10th. Listen, the ladies are ahead of us, guys. It's time for us to step up. So sign up for it. You want to be a part of that as it's coming. Um, hard lesson. Great opportunity. Let's pray if we could. Lord, thank you so much for the way you gently and lovingly teach us. Sometimes it's hard to hear. And if I'm honest, if we're honest with each other, Maybe there's some of us here, it doesn't matter whether we're male or female, that need to confess that, you know, I haven't done a real good job with that. And so, Lord, would you, would you do what you have always done with your incredible grace? Would you forgive us? We confess it right now, where we are. And the only way we're going to be the hero at home is if we turn to you and you infuse us with your power. That's who we want to be. And so, on behalf of all of my friends, our friends gathered here today, I, we just ask for your forgiveness and your direction and how we can become that hero. So help us, would you, Lord? Starting today, it's a new day. And we want to put the cape on. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>